Mike C. Berry, a contemporary urban landscape painter, has brought life and rhythmical energy to his bending and twisting cityscapes, which are full of gestural brushstrokes and pure bright color. Mike, who lives in Knoxville with his wife and daughter, has been honored as the featured artist in the 2007 Dogwood Arts Festival, limited print edition, and awarded the Knoxville News Sentinel Reader's Poll Best Visual Artist in 2009. He has exhibited in numerous group exhibitions and in September 2017, had a solo exhibition called Something Blue. Recently, Mike has illustrated a children's book called The Curious Adventures of Wickle Wackle and His Friends. It is my honor to introduce Mike C. Berry, Knoxville's contemporary urban landscape artist. My name is Mike Berry, and I'm a local artist here in Knoxville, and uh, welcome to my studio. My background as an artist, I've, uh, I I've always been an artist. I felt like someone that was always drawing or sketching. Um, from the earliest memory that I have, I was always observing the world around me and making little sketches. Not so much creating from my imagination, but from the things around me that I saw. I grew up in the church and I would sit with my mother and I would get really squirmy as a you know young boy and she would pull out a pad of paper or a sketchbook, really a, just a scratch pad of blank paper. And I would sit there and, and scratch and, you know, or doodle and sketch and scratch on the scratch board. And so that's probably my earliest memory of actually pen to paper besides your regular elementary school, you know, gluing a cotton ball, which I loved, uh, gl gluing the cotton ball, you know, for Santa's uh, coat or whatever, which I loved. Um, and I, I remember in elementary school, I would get so excited when the, when the art cart would come around. We didn't actually go to an art class uh, room that came later. Um, but I was always excited, like, oh my, I could feel the excitement when that cart would roll in and we would get to, to draw and glue and, and create and make things. And, um, so from that point and the sketching, uh, when I was, my mother was trying to keep me still that kind of merged into, um, me spending long periods of time in my room, uh, drawing and, um, and sketching and, and looking at art and books. And I grew up in the Midwest. My earliest childhood was in, was in Arkansas. And then I moved to Iowa uh, when I was about, well, I guess around 12 or 13. So my young adult was, was Iowa. So I, where I lived in Iowa, I was about two hours from Chicago. And so I got to go to the Chicago Art Institute. It was my very first museum that I ever went to um, as a youngster and was just blown away. And I say all that, so it all kind of came together. I realized, you know, you know, I love art and I've always been making art and I can do this for a living. I can do it. It can be something that I do. I don't have to, you know, be a shoe salesman or, or, uh, you know, work at a bank or something like that, which all those are, are great things. But for me, I was like, I, I need to make things and, and use color and draw and sketch. And so fast forward, I, I went to, I fell in love with it. I had great teachers in high school uh, that encouraged me at a young age. I, I won a best of show in a, like a multi county exhibition that really uh, encouraged me to go on to school and study art. And I realized, okay, I, I must have something, I guess, if people are, you know, are really encouraging me to go and pursue this. And so I continue to do that. And like anybody's journey, I've had my low moments and I've had my high moments. And that's, that's normal. Um, went to a small liberal arts college in Missouri. And um, that was, it was good. It was, I had a good, a great education, not a lot of encouragement, just for whatever reason. And then I decided, you know, I want to continue this. So after college, I 
enrolled in the Savannah College of Art and Design, and I got my master's, and I studied illustration specifically, um, and that was a great, great experience. Uh, it taught me a lot about the business of art, how to uh, put my portfolio together, um, just lots of lots of really real world experiences at, at SCAD. A lot of the professors, most of them are working professionals. They're in the profession doing it along with teaching. They're not just full-time teachers and that's all they do. Um, and so that was really great to have that experience. And then I got out of school, finished school in the mid nineties and, um, just sort of worked, started working for myself. And I fell into more of a, a fine artist role where I would, was working with galleries uh, showing my work in, in area and regional exhibits. And then I moved to Tennessee. My wife's job brought us here. And um, I got involved in the arts community. This this is my home. I've been here for 20 years, um, 21, 22, something like that. And uh, Knoxville is my home. My daughter was born here. And so the roots are sitting deeper and deeper. And I've I've just fallen in love with Knoxville and it's become a prime subject matter. And that's a long story. You know, subjects as artists grow and change and develop, they have different interests and different subject matter. And um, about about the time my daughter was born, a little before my daughter was born, in uh, around 2004, I was hired by the University of Tennessee to uh, be the gallery manager for the, this new downtown gallery, which is a, a extension of the art and architecture Ewing gallery on campus. And I started there in 04. So I was downtown. I was in the middle of this um, growing art scene. And I was really inspired by all of the resurgence of downtown Knoxville. And so all of a sudden, um, I found myself just really sketching and drawing a lot of buildings and streets and the city at night. And that has been um, one of the greatest discoveries. I just, it really fuels my artistic drive. And um, I love, I love the city, the people, um, the, 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 the life in the city and the movement and the colors. And I don't, I don't try to slavishly, render and copy everything just as it is like say like an architectural rendering um i i I really try to infuse a lot of emotion a lot of that that heartbeat or that energy that you have in a city that really uh, moves me and i try to really convey that through a lot of um, brush strokes and line and um and the vibrancy of the color um so that's that's kind of what I've, I've been doing uh, for a, quite a while. And um, I've really count myself really lucky because I know a lot of artists work and work. And, you know, a lot of times they don't they have trouble um, selling their work or getting their work out there. And um, I've been really fortunate to uh, show my work and people embrace it and encourage me and to continue on Um I think even if I wasn't encouraged, I probably it would be harder, of course, but um, it's it's really important to encourage those budding artists around you. And I've had younger artists come to me and say, well, how do you do it? And just, you just got to put it out there. And, and some artists is like, well, I don't feel comfortable showing my work. And I said, I well, that's OK. You know, that may be your, you know, your type of expression may just you just do it for yourself and that's okay but um art is such a beautiful it's a beautiful thing it's a you know it's a language it's a visual language and it should be shared i think one of the most fortunate things i think has happened in my career as i was beginning this new journey painting and drawing the city is in 2007, I submitted a piece that I was really excited about into the Dogwood Arts Festival, and it was selected as the 2007 limited edition print. And um, one great thing about that is just how how the public embraced it and encouraged me and, and how much they love that and it meant to them and people would share that with me. And it's funny how art is interpreted because it's a very... Uh, um, 
it's a piece that I did that captures now, but I had people tell me that it reminded them of how Knoxville used to be. And then people that would say, well, that remi- that that's like looking into the future. That's how Knoxville's going to be. And uh, I thought that was really interesting. But the overall, the overall meaning that I got from that was that it really struck a chord with people. And, um, and another a little point that's that makes me smile. They told me that that was the first print in the history of the Dogwood Arts Festival that actually sold out. The print actually sold out during the duration of the festival, the the month of the month of April. They've had other prints sell out over time, uh, but this was the the first time the print had sold out with you know during the festival which is a really what all that's to say is that that people really love the image which was so encouraging so i think at being honored by that, that selection and it was selected by the public it was a public vote they came to the exhibit and they they selected the piece and uh there was so much good artwork that was there and um but i guess mine just it, mine struck a chord with people and it was so great to have that honor and being selected as the 2007 Dogwood Arts Festival limited edition print winner, which is, is quite an honor. And so um, and I continue to work with the Dogwood Arts Festival now. I am um, I'm I'm actually this year's co-chair uh, for the Arts Festival. So I've continued a relationship with them. Um not necessarily making art for them, but supporting that organization, which is great for our community. And, um, and that's just one of the things I do. I, there's several arts things that I'm involved in with the arts and cultural Alliance and the KMA and the dogwood and now, uh, Knox heritage. So I'm, I, um, I'm spreading my wings and, and, and leaving the studio and trying to, uh, help and influence and, and really, um, support my community through these different organizations. My work is probably considered, um, I mean, it's modern contemporary because I'm making it now um, and we're viewing it in this present time. But I, I guess it has a, a feel of of uh, expressionism maybe a little bit um, a little sprinkle of impressionism um, I, my medium is is mainly pastel I do do oils and acrylics um, pastel is the when I was learning as a child in school um, I learned to sketch and draw with charcoal. I did that all the time. Like I said before, when I would sketch, it was always in black and white. And then I had a, a teacher um, say, we're going to jump to color and, and try color. And I was like, oh, this is so exciting. I mean, other than, you know, crayons and things, but pastel. And so I, pastel, I quickly realized it was a quick color change. It wasn't mixing new colors or searching for it. It was just a kind of a grab and go, which lended itself to my short attention span, I guess. Um, and so pastel became really my first kind of language, color language. And so I, I use that as, um, as my medium of choice and still do. And um, I, I think in my mind, when I think about my work, I think, I think I'm going to do a small pastel color study and that will serve as, you know, working out my composition and my colors. And then I'll use that as a study for larger works. And I have done that. And I think that's my line of thinking, but I get to the pastel and um, I think, well, that's my piece right there. I'm, 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 I'm finished to sort of, so to speak. So I think a lot of times that's why my work in, ends up being kind of small in size is because ultimately in, in my mind, I start off thinking, well, that's going to, it's going to be the beginning uh, color study for this, this larger grand piece, which um, maybe that's just, you know, lofty thinking. I don't know. Um, when I have a, a commission piece that calls for, a larger size. That's usually the path I take. But um, when I'm just left to my own, it's usually small, um, small studies or smaller pieces. Um, I was, I was really inspired um, coming up. This is before I moved to Knoxville. I met and got to work with Wolf Kahn, who uh, is a renowned colorist painter, and um, he really encouraged me. And he 
came over and he took, I was, we were painting actually, and uh, he came over and took my palette out of my hand and he said, where are your pinks and your, and your, and your yellows and your oranges? I had all these earth colors. This is before my palette really changed. And he said, he said, look at that sky. He said, there's pink in that sky. And I, I said, I was like, I don't really see the pink. And he said, it's there. You just got to look for it. And so he really encouraged me to, um, look for the colors. And, and he said, you will see them once you train your eye and you learn to look. And so from Wolf Khan's encouragement to look for those colors. And he said, don't be afraid. He said, always be looking and always be working. Um, and so that sort of began the, uh, my color change, my palette changed to this from a, a more traditional earth colors to more really bright, um, vibrant colors. I really um, tip my hat to him. Um, and he passed away a couple years ago. Um, but his work has continued to inspire me. Um, he's primarily a landscape painter, but um, I've taken the things that I learned from him and uh, in studying other artists, um, uh, old and new, current artists, um, Brian Rutenberg is a current contemporary artist that I, I find um, very encouraging. He's very open with his thoughts and encouragement. So just by looking at these other artists um, really encourages my work. I, I think what encourages my subject matter is sometimes just taking a, a walk, an, an evening. For me, it's like an evening walk um, or a drive and just look and just go and a reflective look. And I tell you, when, when you get out and start looking, you stumble on these things that people would miss, an, an alleyway that people would just dismiss as an old dirty alley. But, but then I stop and look and, you know, the rainwater has created a puddle and the lights are reflecting and there's this, all these interesting shapes. And then it begins to tell a story. And uh, I think that's where my illustration background comes out. I start attaching... Maybe it's a little nostalgia of, of the place or um, I start thinking about maybe what that alley or that building or that street or what it could represent or it could show or a feeling that it could uh, produce. And so all these thoughts start coming and it's just it's just from looking. Um, all these things come rushing all at once and uh, your influences and encouragement and your awareness of your surroundings that kind of comes together and that really fuels the fire and then that sparks that sparks something and and um you know for me it doesn't take it doesn't take much sometimes because i do a lot of like uh, restaurants and um, cafes because i love that artificial light at the um at the while the natural light is changing and getting dark and I, the just that that contrast of the artificial light with with uh, natural light or natural darkness, and so uh, a lot of times it's just driving by a, a donut shop or a cafe or the way of building and like I was saying the the water on the street or the way the cars and it's just how it's how life it's how the things around us create interesting shape and color and light that I I just want to. I want to put it down to tell a story or invoke emotion. So that's that, that's what really keeps me going. And um, just by getting out and looking. You know, I think about my future and where my work is going. And I guess my I, I always will continue to do what I'm doing, uh, making making and creating and interpreting the world around me. But some new work that I've, I've been inspired is basically sort of moving into the sculpture world, but it's not sculpture. Uh, well, I guess it could be, um, but is bringing my work out of the two dimension into three dimension. So kind of deconstructing my, my paintings and pulling elements out that, that stand alone, um, almost like uh, separating the shapes and sh and pulling them almost like in a shadow box way, which has been done before, but you know what? I've never done it. So um, I have been really um, 
fascinated by the idea of small models and um, uh, almost like theater sets in a way or um, props, but using that and not necessarily theater props in the pure sense, but more um, more within a you know a traditional rectangle or square of a, a regular painting, but just having elements recede and come forward uh, physically, and but still capture that painting style. And I know that sounds so confusing, but these are things that artists have to deal with. I think or we all do. We have these ideas in our heads, like, how is this going to work? And I need to, I need to, uh, you know, if I separate this and, and, uh, pull this out. And so I'm in the very beginning stages. I really don't have, uh, I don't have any work. Uh, I've some, well, I have, I have some, um, I did a, during, uh, the pandemic actually was kind of my first, um, kind of putting my toe in the water, so to speak. Um, I made a, um, I made a COVID mask uh, for a fundraiser and, um, I, I took one of my paintings, which I, um, I love the Tennessee theater downtown. And I love that marquee sign. And that's a whole nother thing that you, we can talk about later, but just my fascination with lights. And, um, so I love signs and neon signs and marquees and all that. Anyway, so the Tennessee blade sign has that beautiful marquee. Well, I thought that would be great as a mask because the marquee, you know, it could be like a little model and it could look like my painting with the colors and things could be, you know, it, could, it wouldn't be just like a perfect little, you know, straight up and down. It would be sort of curved and, um, and would have that same feeling as my paintings do. And, um, and so I made this actual mask that has the marquee and the blade sign that goes up. And um, I, I put battery lights, battery powered lights in it so you could turn it on and it would light up. And um, I did a little tongue in cheek thing with uh, changing the name of some movies uh, to fit the quarantine. This little uh, 3D painting, as I call it. I started thinking, what else could I do with this? You know, this is, and it's kind of got me fired up and excited about what things can I make. Um, and so I'm, I'm, that's what I'm going through now. So my ambition is to try, is to continue to, to use, you know, color and movement and capture the city and city life, but also maybe, you know, present it in a different way, a unique way, a different way for, for me. And uh, we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm.